Hi there, um, this is my HP 3406A broadband sampling voltmeter. It's quite a nice meter. It was uh, designed in the late 60s, 66 I believe. But it's basically um, a wideband RF uh, voltmeter. And it's got fairly flat response up to about 500 megahertz. So it's quite a nice instrument. I'm, I mainly use it for um, measuring RF power if you terminate the uh, probe here at 50 ohms you can read in dBm off the front panel meter but anyway it's gone faulty um, and as, you, as you can maybe see I've already got it in bits and I, then I thought well I should do a video about it but uh, what's gone faulty is it's got a calibration socket on the front in which you insert the probe and goes in there anyway and it's supposed to provide a one volt output so you can calibrate the uh, meter before you use it but um, when I tried to do that there was absolutely no reading on the meter the meter itself was still reading fine it was still reading RF volts if you plugged it into a signal generator it's just that the calibrator output had stopped working so I took it all apart and um, it's a hell of a job to get in it. It's really well made. But there's numerous metal panels. And over here is a collection of bits, uh, panels I've had to take off. Um, but, you know, like everything that's made by HP, it was really well made and it's well screened for RF. So anyway, I got to the point of hinging this board up to try and get to the uh, back of the uh, socket where you get the um, calibrator connection which is underneath this panel and the calibrator is down here where you plug the probe in it's a long tube and it's got some components in it and on the end is a connection with a coax the orange coax and um, first of all I thought there'd be the calibrator would be on this panel here but that's just a load of switching so I had to trace the uh, orange coax cable if I get my meter, it um, I'll put it on the uh, one end on there. That goes to the uh, probe um, connection, and when the switch is pushed in for the calibrator signal, it connects to this point here, and. Then that orange coax goes all the way up through here to one of the main boards. Up to the main boards here. So if I go along here, I find it's connected to that point, and that trace goes all the way up to this bit here. So it's this circuit here. I haven't got this circuit in front of me. I've got it on my phone, but I'm using my phone to video, so I can't show you this circuit. It's just a two transistor oscillator. Uh, no idea what frequency it oscillates at, because there's no information in the service manual about what you should get out the calibrator, other than the fact that it's one volt. But anyway, we check the two transistors, and I've already cut one of them out. And that was faulty, it was just open circuit completely. And here is the transistor. It's uh, MP, what is it? MPSA 3391. Okay, well, and then MPSA 3391 
seems to be just a boring run of the mill uh, general purpose MPN transistor. So nothing special. So um, if I can find something like a BC547, I shall put that in. So I found myself a BC548. That's got the same pin outs. Um, collector base in the middle, emitter on the other end. Uh, so what I'll do is, um, as I've cut off the legs of the old transistor, I'll just pull them out and won't bother to take the, the whole board out. I'll just put it in from, suck all the solder out of the holes and put the transistor in from the top and that should be fine. So I'll just go ahead and do that. Transistor's now in there. It's um, that one there. Wasn't too hard to get the uh, old legs out and suck the solder out. And uh, I just now reposition everything and uh, see if it still works. Okay, um, right, everything's back together for the time being to test it anyway. So um, I'm going to turn it on, put it on the one volt range and wait for the meters to settle a bit. Plug the uh, probe in. Okay, well you can see the uh, needle's gone right across to one volt. Um, on the one volt range, yeah. But I don't know whether changing that transistor has affected the uh, output level from that oscillator. Um, it might also be interesting to see what is actually coming out of there by sticking a scope on it. So I'll just stick a scope on it. Right, I've got the scope on the end of that metal tube, which is where the probe plugs into and on the screen turn the light off we've got um, frequency of 62 kilohertz and volts peak to peak 2.2 volts peak to peak RMS volts is 986 millivolts which is not far off um, the one volt so it's quite a low frequency signal they're using as a calibrator signal it's got a bit of uh, jitter and stuff on it but I guess that doesn't make much difference I mean some people would say it needs recapping this instrument but as long as it still works I don't think it's worth all the hassle of going through all that. But um, now I've got to put it back together. The uh, other thing um, about this meter, when I bought it a few years ago, all the uh, paint is starting to flake off the uh, meter scale, um, which has got a nice mirror for parallax error which is all a bit sad All the, and some of the numbers are falling off you know you can't read it as clearly so what I did was I scanned it scanned it on a computer onto a computer and then using paint I think it was paint on windows uh, touched up the bits that weren't clear on the numbers and and whatever and then I printed it onto photographic paper um, to the exact same dimensions and the result looks quite good I think but uh, of course you haven't got the uh, mirror, mirror for the parallax error but what I might try and do is um, print another one and stick it on top of cut out the bit with the mirror in it off the piece of uh, photographic paper and stick that on top of the uh, original original meter face which I keep inside the instrument in case I need to photocopy it again 
Okay, well, I think what I'll do now is just put it all back together. Okay, after an, what, nearly 100 screws probably and 20 minutes later, I've got it back together, back where it lives. I'll just go through the calibration again. Probe's plugged in, calibrator's turned off. First of all, you need to zero it. That's near enough zero. Turn calibrate on. Should read exactly one volt, which it does, so I don't need to adjust the calibration. Well, just a bit, maybe. Okay. I'll just plug it into a signal generator, see what it thinks of that. And we've got 145 megahertz, zero dBm. And got. BNC adapter and 50 ohm through line termination. Put it onto 0 dBm scale and it reads near enough minus 1, which is probably within its tolerance and also the signal generator's tolerance. So I go up in frequency a bit. Um, To up to 300 megahertz and it's starting to drift up a bit now and five hundred exactly zero dBm. I go any higher than that and it starts reading quite high. Yeah, it's reading plus one now, and I'm pretty sure my signal generator is accurate. It is on the uh, spectrum analyzer, anyway. So I'll go up to 700. Plus one still. Eight hundred, and it's reading plus two. So it's it's starting to overread a bit at higher frequencies. It's still pretty good at 500 megahertz. So that, I guess that's the end of the video, really. Um, apart from that, what else does it do? It goes down to minus 50 dBm, or 1 millivolt full scale. And up to 20 dBm, or 23 dBm, actually, on the, uh, on the meter. So it's quite a useful thing. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.